Hi, everybody. So I am Noah. This is Melanie. And so the Edge Lab, as Nick said, is the Experiential Design and Gaming Environments Lab. And it's an interdisciplinary lab at Ryerson that involves many different faculties. Um, I'm coming out of the Early Childhood Studies department of it. And uh, we're looking really primarily at, at the Edge Lab right now the way that uh, children, technology, and disabilities intersect. We're not really gonna talk too much about the disability stuff today. Um, we also are focusing really on play, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So, um, whoo. So, the <laughs> title of our presentation is Escaping the Creepy, Escaping the Creepy Treehouse, Whose Games and Whose Play. And uh, so, Melanie's gonna talk a bit about the creepy tree house, but I would like to talk first about play. I'm really, really interested in play spaces, in um, play spaces in online environments and offline environments, offline environments in particular. So um, I really love playgrounds. They're really amazing environments where, um, you know, children can do all kinds of different things. Um, and it's really interesting to think about play spaces that we have constructed as adults for children. Uh, and that leads me to our next slide, I think, which is the play spaces that children construct for themselves. Now, you could look at this slide and say, oh my God, we need to build these people. These poor kids don't have a playground to go and play at, right? But another way of looking at this is from a strengths model, and we could see that, can you hear me when I look at the slides? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, you can like look at this and say, oh, awesome. These kids are finding a place to play wherever they need to play. And, and I'm very interested in that. Um, why are they choosing? What influences are mediating their choices? Are, do they have choices? Are they allowed to go outside? Are they allowed to explore? So these are the kinds of questions that I'm, I'm wondering about. Uh, what are my notes? It is really kind of interesting to think about the different ideas that adults have about children and about how children play. Um, one thing that's really, really important, especially in our work, uh, doing research directly with children, and I'm gonna emphasize the with children because we try to do socially um, engaged research with children, not on kids, so we're not experimenting on children. We're experimenting with children. Um, and so one thing that's really important to think about when you're doing that is the power dynamics that exist between adults and children. Uh, it's really important to consider this as a researcher, but it's really also important to consider this if you're doing anything for children. Who is this for? Is this for you or is this for kids? Is this a play space for kids or is this a play space for you to sort of showcase something else? Um, ethics fits into this in a really big way. So in, in research, we have to think about ethics a lot. Uh, and so when you're dealing directly with children, you really have to think about this. How do children give consent? And children can give consent in a lot of different ways, but they can also give dissent. They can also dissent in a lot of different ways. And, um, a child can say, no, I don't want to participate in your project by looking away from you, by not saying anything, or just by like turning away. And so you need to be really sensitive about who you are as an adult, how, much, how many times bigger you are than this person when you're engaging with them in this practice. Um, as I said before, who is this for? Is this for me as a researcher? Is this for children? And, and not that, that there is like a right answer and a wrong answer, or maybe, maybe there is a right answer and a wrong answer for that, but the process that's really important is engaging in the questions around that. Um, how do we see children? Do we see children as passive? Do we see children as active? Do we see children as, as able and capable? Or do we see them as vulnerable? 
that we're asking these questions as people engaged in doing work with children is the important thing and that's what this orange is about. The importance of checking yourself. You, it's crucial, it is crucial for people working with children to look at their own biases, to look at the power dynamics that exist between children and adults and really try to understand how that influences and how that mediates the answers that children give you the data that children give you, the way that children play if adults are around, and uh, a, a lot of that stuff we really need to look at ourselves and also how we as adults interpret the data that children give us. Are we interpreting it through the voice of children or are we interpreting it through our own nostalgia? Are we interpreting it through our own understanding of how we think children are? So with that, I am going to hand the rest of the presentation off to me. Thank you very much. Uh, which is that, that one there? One, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just following up on what Noah said, in fact, I'd like to give the remaining four minutes, three minutes to Noah <laughs> to just continue talking about this because it's so wonderful. Um, I'm going to talk on a similar theme, uh, and I'd like you to keep Noah's comments in mind. I'd like for everyone to remember for a moment the story of the Dion quintuplets and what, if anything, it taught us about the power relations between adults, children, and the culture industry. Then, as now, adults have discovered new and novel ways to help children. Unfortunately, these efforts can easily transform the child's world into an adult spectacle. I'm not sure if anyone recognizes uh, Kane's Arcade. Have, have any of you seen the film? Okay, I'd like you to think about that today. One of the most contemporary forms of adultism is what educator Chris Lott terms the creepy treehouse. Creepy treehouses are adult created play spaces embedded with adult values, interests, and beliefs. Um, children's lack of awareness of the adult superstructure in the form of data collection, monitoring, or embedded ideological values makes them unethical by design. So some examples of creepy treehouses are the uh, so-called uh, Classroom 2.0 uh, spaces, a lot of children's games in virtual worlds, um, and et cetera. Um, now as then, Adultism is guide by, guided by the belief that the enlightened adult is one who thinks up ideas for children. It seems to be presumed that children today, unlike those of the past, have few diversions of their own, that they are incapable of self-organization, have become addicted to spectator amusements, and will languish if left to rely on their own resources. That was written in 1965 uh, by Iona and Peter, Peter Opie well before any of these video game problems that we have today. I suggest that adults who wish to create objects, spaces, or culture for children, for their learning or play, need to rethink their approach or risk creating creepy tree houses. To build on what Noah said, I suggest the following. A call to action for creators of children's digital culture. Uh, one, learn the hundred languages of no. There is no such thing as childproof. Ditch badges encourage the intrinsic. Ensure unknowable outcomes. Support unobserved solitary play. Offer children their own privacy controls. Designed for hacking, modding, and customization. And last, to reflect back on Kane's Arcade again. Finally, for all of us who were inspired by the story of Kane's Arcade, I'd like you to reconsider your responses. To ask you about the role of adults in this story. Their interests, motivations, and beliefs. But most of all, as an adult, speaking to a group of adults, I want to ask you to consider some of the myths that we create in order to justify our actions. 
Number one, adults who help children are well-intentioned. Number two, a child's play does not exist unless it is witnessed by adults. Number three, it takes a special adult to notice a special child. Number four, children, special children, ought to be rewarded for their specialness. And number five, adults save the day. Be good and stay out of trouble. <laughs>